Hello there. Thanks for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and look at this TRIPS Festival poster. Poster, not handbill, January of 1966. What a key cultural and music event this was. Holy cats, this is really a special one. Absolutely landmark event in the history of Bay Area music, the development of psychedelics and hippies and LSD and everything, and certainly the cultural revolution that rock music did bring in the late 1960s. This was just huge. Okay, so you've probably heard of the, <laughs> of the Trips Festival if you're here. This is the, um, as I said, the cardstock poster designed by Peter Bailey. He's the same person who designed Bill Graham's first poster for the um, Fillmore series known as BG-1, the yellow and red poster, the simple one, the non-psychedelic. And this, of course, has the nice solar image, but otherwise is sort of non-psychedelic itself. Um, so, but, um, you know, whether you're coming, whatever angle you're coming from, this was an important weekend. It was a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The musical draw, I suppose, of the poster, and in hindsight of the event, was, of course, the Grateful Dead. They played it. And you also had the second ever performance, public gig, I should say, by Big Brother and the Holding Company, minus, of course, Janice, who, would come, who joined the group six months later. And there's, there's just stories abound from every source. They're in all the books, you know, the Bill Graham books and everything about this tremendously fun weekend and quotes from all the dead members and everything. It's just really a fun special time. This is the weekend that Jerry Garcia first met Mr. Bill Graham and you can be sure that was, you know, that had a lot of ramifications for years to come and Garcia was very impressed actually with Graham who got that on the floor and tried to help him fix his broken guitar. Graham was hired by the way as the coordinating producer of this weekend so he sort of ran around the uh, Longshoreman's Hall down at Fisherman's Wharf in San Fran with a clipboard and a cardigan sweater and um, you know it's been said he's the only person who was not high at the event. People were flying on LSD very much still legal. Of course, the very name of the event, the Trips Festival, all the insiders knew what it meant. Perhaps people like the cops didn't. But um, Graham, of course, coming off the uh, strength of his first two Mime Troop appeal benefits, as I said, he was the coordinating producer for this show. And you know something? Graham took some real knocks. He was really panned. Jan Wenner of Rolling Stone, who um, hadn't started Rolling Stone yet, under a pseudonym, called him a real drag in a, local, uh, in a local paper. And members of the Grateful Dead and Big Brother and the Holding Company, you know, sort of had not great things to say about him. And Ken Kesey, the head Mary Prankster, just flat out ignored him at this event. But, um, you know, it was said that Bill was trying to run the darn event like a Swiss watch, but the whole weekend was complete and utter lunacy. It was just, um, you know, everything was sort of planned, but from once it started, anything went. And it was just, by all accounts, a simply crazy, crazy weekend. Here's a picture of recent times that I took of Longshoreman Hall down at Fisherman's Wharf, a very oddly shaped building. And here's a picture of the inside, and uh, more oddness, you know, it looks like a giant golf ball in there or something, and there's the balcony that people were in and even jumped out of <laughs> into bed sheets and things like that. It was just... Um, Total anarchy, but a lot of fun, and I guess, other than maybe some bad trips, pretty harmless, too. It was really an extension of the famous acid tests that had been taking, taking place, um, thanks to the Merry Pranksters and Ken Kesey. And the presentation was anything goes. You know, we tend to think again about the music, but there was mixed media, uh, light shows, movies, just general craziness everywhere, bands, of course, dancing, and as I said, people were even jumping off the balconies into blankets and things, just um, just having a grand old time. And uh, it was all fueled by the still legal LSD, I think I stated that. And um, they on the, on the um, right side of this poster, you do have the, uh, the solar image by Bailey, which is really compelling. And on the left side, as you can see, he chose to leave a big space up there for some reason at the top, just for artistic license, I'm sure. But there is um, all the information about what happened during the days. It's interesting, the thing opened on Friday with a segment called, a big segment called, American America Needs Indians. And a uh, primary mover for that, the reason for that, is because this event was co-created by Stuart Brand. Uh, he would go on to start the Whole Earth Catalog and was accomplished in many other fields, and he was really obsessed with American Indians, so he got his first day segment for that. 
Um, but, uh, you know, the, as far as the crowd went, seeing these, this craziness, everyone was there. It was just um, every hippie, every artist, every musician, beatnik, every coffee house hangout person, if you will, um, just from all over the state. They were all there. It's just, uh, talk about one of those few events you'd give anything to go back into history and attend. It would just be, it would just be a beyond imagination almost. And uh, they were all there to experience this swirling mass of artistic and entertainment anarchy. And um, it's also sort of, uh, I sort of see this, uh, as, as do historians, I suppose, as a peak, a peak experience, because shortly hereafter, going forward, all of this anarchy and artistic, you know, tornado of, of happening things would start to coalesce, and the weak parts would sort of fall away. And in fact, Ralph J. Gleason himself, in the San, Fran Chron San Francisco Chronicle, um, put it all on the music. He said the best part of this weekend was the music, and he even called the light show projections um, uh, sort of dull. You know, he said they were like dull projections. And another book called the Apache Indian stuff sort of noble and interminable. It's almost like people were sitting through it just to get to the more fun stuff. So that, that stuff that really grabbed people, that um, moved forward and changed society forever, was of course the music. And that's why we tend to focus on who was playing here. Wow, Big Brother's second gig, and wow, Grateful Dead, and all this stuff. And um, indeed, after this weekend, which was January 21, 22, and 23 of 1966, as you can see, right after the event, head prankster Ken Kesey went to Mexico, the pranksters themselves went to Los Angeles, and there was a vacuum to be filled in the Bay Area for more fun events like this, although a little bit tamer, a little more organized, and a lot more music. And that was a vacuum that Bill Graham, Chet Helms, and John Carpenter stepped in to fill, John Carpenter being Chet Helms' partner in The Family Dog for the first few months. So, but this Trips Festival, I'll tell you, as I said, if it's one of the pop culture events, landmark events in history, that you'd go back, if you could pick half a dozen things, this would, this would have to be in it. It's just um, spectacular. And this is a really fun advertising poster for Windows. It's sort of made of card stock. You can hear it sort of uh, ruffle there. And uh, there are also smaller handbills, matter of fact, which I've already blogged. So, okay, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for tripping by. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time for something else. I look forward to it. Bye-bye.